Two big storms are coming to the United States, bringing heavy rain, wind, coastal erosion, and heavy snowfall. One will impact the west, one will impact the east, and you may not realize it, but you're watching both of them right here, right now on your screen. I'm going to get into the details of who's going to see what and when. A lot of variability among the model guidance with the track of the storm, especially in the east. We're going to take a look at why that is the case. I actually did a video on that last evening, and I will link to that video at the end of this. Anyway, welcome into the show. Jason is my name. Glad you're here to track the weather with me today. It's hump day. It's Wednesday, and we've got a lot to get into. And we're going to start in a little bit of an unusual place, and that is with today's Weather IQ question. Yesterday, I asked you, what was the most popular or common candy at Halloween? And the answer was Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Today, I've got a different question along those same lines, though. It's fun. Take a look. Today's question is the opposite of yesterday's, and it's simply, what is the least popular candy, Halloween candy that is, in the U.S.? And here are your choices. Circus peanuts, black licorice, candy corn, or wax candies? If you know the answer, type it in the comments section. If you don't, just wait till the end of the show. If you just want to guess, put it in the comments. But I'd love to hear what your least favorite candy is and what your most favorite candy is. That one that will make you go in when the kids aren't looking and raid their candy buckets. All right, let me know what uh, your favorite and least favorite is down in the comments section. And let me know where you're commenting from too. Always interested to hear uh, what you are seeing, where you are in terms of the weather and knowing where you are. Now we're going to get into that big storm that's coming to the east and the other one that's coming to the west. Yeah, looking forward to some of that Halloween candy, folks. Uh, but in the meantime, if you haven't yet joined the team, hit the subscribe button right down below. Give the content a like and leave a comment. If there's anything that we can be in prayer about here, please put it down there and we'll make sure that we pray over that for you. Walk alongside of you and support you however we can. Thank you for all the support here. We're over 6,000 members and we're growing, headed toward 10. That's going to be a great day. It's a great day today. Anyway, anytime we can talk about the weather together and we're going to start here with the satellite image and you can see a bunch of clouds, especially over the eastern part of the country from Maine up in Canada, actually all the way down across the southern tier and connecting to this big swirl down here. What is that? That is Hurricane Priscilla and that's going to play a role here in the southwest over the coming days. We'll look at that. Another big batch of clouds off the coast as we've got big energy rounding the uh, apex of a ridge out here. That's also going to be a weather maker. Here is the satellite and radar combined and these little blue areas and red areas are rain, believe it or not. It's a little bit of an interesting color, but this is what this site uses. And you can see this very, very light rain out here in New Mexico, the panhandle of Texas, even got a little batch moving through West Virginia, Western portions of Virginia. But the big story is the rain along this frontal boundary up here in the Northeast. And if we hover over these areas, you can see some areas are picking up as much as two tenths to a quarter of an inch of rain per hour. That's good rain. You need the rain up here and it's great to see that occurring. We need it in the southeast too, but unfortunately the tail end of that front is a little bit dry and we're not seeing much rain out of that. All of this will push across the northeast today. There's the frontal boundary that's responsible for that. Got a couple little waves of low pressure enhancing the rain as they kind of ride the front, but uh, all of this will move out of the picture as we go through the afternoon and evening up here in the northeast, and the front will be slow to exit. The flow is coming more easterly, particularly the farther south you go, as opposed to meridionally and pushing that, driving it through. So we're not seeing that. As a matter of fact, this front's gonna hang up here off the coast, and be responsible for generating or helping to generate an area of low pressure. And that's one of the big storms that we're going to talk about. But uh, that's what's going on right now. Got a little bit of rain action this afternoon back in the Four Corners as well. Alerts map, not all of that alerty. Got a little bit of a dense fog uh, scenario going on down here across southern portions of Louisiana and Mississippi. But most of these alerts up here in the northeast are for low temperatures tomorrow morning. Have some frost advisories, some freeze warnings, and a couple of those back here in Michigan as well. Most of these up here in the Midwest will expire this morning and be out of the picture. Same in Ohio, Ohio, Idaho, what in the world? That is what is going on on the alerts map, folks. Easy for me to say. Now, Got a couple of things that we've got to talk about, and that's big storm uh, potential over the next five days to seven days across the country. One out west, one in the east, and we saw this earlier in an animation, but here's what's going on. This is our energy map. This is mid-level energy, and I took you through several different models and what they're showing in terms of how energy is coming together in the mid-levels to make a surface low pressure. And I 
targeted the East Coast with that because we've got variability across what the models are showing. And I did that yesterday. I've linked to that uh, video here as well. And so what's, watch what happens. We're watching a couple of things here as uh, the Europeans see it. And here's what's going on. There is an energy piece of energy coming through, uh, riding that frontal boundary through Tennessee. I've got another short wave way up here in uh, Canada, and then another big system out west. And here's that hurricane right here in the southwest off the Baja. Now watch this. Watch what happens as we go on out in time. You get that little piece of energy. It starts to cut off over the southeast. The other piece of energy up in Canada is diving in toward it. And the European actually breaks, has two, two distinct short waves. That big one here, and you can see the big uh, red area there, and then another one diving in into the Mississippi Valley as we go on out into Saturday. Storm coming ashore out west as well. Want to be responsible for rain out there. And so we'll stop it here. This is Sunday morning. So now we have low pressure developing off the southeast coast. And I'll show you what that looks like on the surface map in a second. We break that down. But then you've got this big uh, piece of energy, that other little piece that has merged in here. And it's helped to generate this storm along that frontal boundary that's hanging up. And now we've got another piece of energy diving in. Big trough out west with southerly flow bringing the remnants of Priscilla in here to the southwest states. And a lot of rainfall going to occur out west where you need the rain as well. And then over here in the east, look at that. That, P, that uh, short wave merges with our coastal storm energy and we get this big blow up of contours off the coast. And it sort of meanders around and does a little dosey do, -si do And then eventually another piece of energy comes in through Canada and merges with it, scoots it back over, reforms the storm back here toward the northeast so you get another round of rain up here. And uh, that's what's going on from the European standpoint. The GFS shows something a little bit different, and we're not going to go into all of that because it still holds from yesterday. You can go back and watch that video. But eventually, as we get on in toward the next weekend, things have cleared out. But this is kind of a slow developing process, and we'll see energy continue to come in the West Coast. So that's what's going on upstairs. What does that mean for downstairs? Well, it means as we go through the afternoon today, we're going to see that frontal boundary push off the coast and bring uh, high pressures going to bring clearing conditions and cool 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 uh, temperatures overnight getting way down in uh, below freezing up here in the northeast and really push everything off and be in control over the next couple of days so friday thursday friday into saturday going to be very nice but we start to see saturday afternoon conditions deteriorating along the uh, eastern portions of the carolinas as that low pressure gets its act together another little piece of energy working in through the lakes that's what's going to merge here with the storm eventually and uh, the and we'll stop it right here we get into sunday afternoon and now you've got a 993 low developing off the coast of north carolina some models are merging this energy in farther north and some models are doing it farther east and only doing a partial phase. And where that energy comes together is what's going to make all the difference in terms of who sees the impacts and how much impact we get and how far up the coast. There are divergence. The GFS wants to really bring this up the coast, and I'll show you that. The European gets rain as far as New York City up into Boston, and then the low pressure kind of gets uh, in, incorporated into another piece of energy backs into the coast as we get on out into Tuesday and then we kind of get a little swirly swirl a do -si do whatever you want to call that and then it finally moves on out and then it gets captured again by another piece of energy and uh, pulls it back into Nova Scotia and back into Maine and it finally clears out by next week that is certainly a possibility a lot of energy in the flow and it makes it a, for a very complicated forecast so that's what's going on there the GFS on the other hand look what it does it brings the energy around. You can't really see the energy. You kind of see it here with a reflection of uh, precipitation, but uh, it joins forces a little bit farther to the north, and therefore the system pulls up a little bit farther to the north and gets captured and really pounds New England and the mid-Atlantic, and you're going to see a lot of coastal erosion, a lot of wind if that occurs, a lot of rainfall along the coast, particularly up here inland. You get rain inland all the way into New England with the GFS scenario. The European, not quite so much. It keeps a little farther south. The Icon's a little bit more in the European camp. The Canadian is finally kind of getting an idea, not scooting it out to sea so much. So I think we're going to see some impacts. And look here in the west, too, as we get on in toward uh, Saturday afternoon, seeing rain pick up out here with the GFS and uh, certainly some snow in the higher elevations as low pressure begins to wind up, energy moving onshore. That tropical system, Priscilla, is getting integrated into the southeasterly flow, or southwesterly flow, rather, uh, coming into the Four Corners region. We're going to see rain throughout the weekend into the week, 
and snow levels will be falling as low pressure moves into the plains. High pressure brings in cool air from Canada on the back side of that. You get a northeasterly flow. Much of Montana looks like it may be in for a little bit of snow. Certainly the higher elevations will be and then more energy pushing on shore. It's a very, very active pattern. Makes it very difficult to see what's going on. And as a matter of fact, here is how the west plays out. We go on into Friday, rain breaking out in the Four Corners region, and the new system moving into the Pacific Northwest, bringing rain up there. More tropical moisture, even behind Priscilla, will become incorporated into the south. Westerly flow, more energy moving on as we get on into Tuesday and Wednesday, and you can just see the snow piling up out here. And as a matter of fact, here's what the European shows in terms of the way of total snowfall. You could look for uh, several inches up to a couple of feet in the higher elevations out here in some of the Rocky Mountains and the Sierra Nevadas up into the Cascades. So we're getting our snow season kicked off very, very nicely here in the West, folks. As far as temperatures go over the next couple of days, High temperature is going to be in the 50s across the north, 60s, and then back into the 70s as we get uh, some return flows. That high pressure kind of builds in, and we have a trough out west bringing in southwesterly flow, return flow around the high, and then going to see those southerly winds bring warm temperatures into the plains. Very warm across the south, 80s and 90s. Not so bad up in the northwest interior sections in the mid 70s, 70s across the north. Going to be another cool day as we get into Thursday for highs up here in the northeast. Highs not getting out of the 40s and spots but uh, warming up back into the plains still warm across the south and then friday is going to be a very very nice day in the east with temperatures more fall like crisp air conditions and uh, 70s all the way down into the southeast with warm temperatures in the plains and cooling off with another trough working into the pacific northwest on friday low temperatures very very cold overnight some locations well below freezing into the 20s all the way through the great lakes area back into the northern plains as well warmer across the south for sure and then warming up uh, across the south here um, and back into the midwest and places like in the central plains going to be warming up on friday but very very cold up in the northwest this will be the apex or the most in the highest intensity of the coolest weather on friday morning that's when everything culminates you'll see some teens up here in new england and the northeast as well so watch those plants and that's the forecast folks got a lot of variability especially out east with the track because you're waiting for energy to come together that's called phasing and where we have phasing there always can be timing differences and that's what we're going to be watching hopefully the models will come into much better agreement because they're still at odds with each other. My guess is that we don't see the storm ride all the way up the coast into the New England area. I think what we'll see instead is a coastal storm form off of the southeast and ride up and affect areas along and south of New York City and um, over to the eastern half of North Carolina and Virginia, parts of South Carolina too. There will be some wind, there will be some rain, there won't be any snow out of this, but there will be plenty of coastal erosion. So if you've got any beach plans, watch for rip currents and strong winds at the beach with potential coastal flooding. And that is your forecast for the upcoming storm. We're gonna look at space weather and the answer to the weather IQ question coming right up as well. What is that? Well, that's Tropical Storm Jerry looking like a hot mess. The low-level circulation is sort of exposed here with convection blown off to the southeast. Not in great shape, but it will continue to organize slowly as conditions become slightly more favorable, more tropical wave action moving off of Africa, and just some rain and convection here in the tropics and the Caribbean up here in the northern, around the northern islands, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. John, and back into the U.S. British Virgin Islands, places like that, seeing some rain, of course, Central America with that Central American gyre working over time. We'll see potential over the course of the next couple of weeks for something to develop in the Caribbean. We'll keep our eyes on it right now. The only thing going is Tropical Storm Jerry moving to the west-northwest, 23 miles per hour. Max sustained winds 50 miles per hour, and then this little 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation. I'm sure nothing's going to form here as this little tropical wave moves into Mexico over the next couple of days. We'll take a look at shear profile over the next two weeks. Not looking all that uh, impressive out there right now from a shear standpoint, but we do get a window about the mid-month here where the shear profiles look better out in the Caribbean, the MDR, and over into the Gulf. That will 
potentially become much more unfavorable after that time frame. It looks like some of the tropical forcing is moving into a location that would bring shear back in here and make conditions a little bit more unfavorable as we approach the second half of the month. If we take a look here at the uh, European Ensemble, there is Tropical Storm Jerry. Everybody takes it up to uh, all, all members that develop it, take it up east of Bermuda, which is good news. Do have some signal here, a little bit of a signal for something developing in the Caribbean with off of that Central American gyre. We're going to watch that. Of course, got a signal for uh, low pressure developing off the southeast coast. That's probably almost guaranteed to happen and then another little signal for something out here in the MDR but it's already headed to the northwest so probably not going to see anything from the MDR get all the way across this time of year because shear is picking up as far as the MJO tropical forcing out in the Indian Ocean over in that area of the world looking to move into potentially more unfavorable phases as we approach the mid or the get past the midpoint of the month so from that standpoint may see an end to a tropical season come up in a hurry as we get into the end of the month with, with which would be good news for sure but we still got another couple of weeks out here we need to pay attention to everything that's going on and this isn't infallible there certainly could be tropical systems develop even with a poor or less than stellar mjo phase so lots to watch but nothing imminent and things look like they might deteriorate out in the uh, tropical Atlantic before too long so that would certainly be good news now we're gonna check space weather get you out of here with the answer to today's IQ question all is quiet on the space weather front but the KP is creeping up we're going to see enhancement of solar wind courtesy of this coronal hole that's facing us we had a couple of little C-class flares getting almost to M class down here. You can see that on the x-ray chart, nothing big, nothing major, nothing to be worried about right now. But uh, as that solar wind hits us from the coronal hole, we'll expect to go into minor geomagnetic storm conditions at least, and that might make for a small chance of an aurora. So we'll keep our eyes open for that. Sunspots got a few turning toward us, but nothing too impressive. This is the most impressive one, and you can see the charges are very small. It's not very complex. It's not very large. Negative out in front of positive, and as long as we don't have any mixing of that, the risk of solar flaring is low. Had an earthquake during my show yesterday down in Papua New Guinea, 6.6 .6 at a depth of 99 kilometers, so fairly shallow. So I think some damage occurred. I haven't seen a lot of reports out of there yet, but I had another uh, earthquake today up here in uh, Guatemala. I had a 5.0 here offshore of Guatemala. don't think that did any damage either. No tsunami warnings or anything like that. A couple more little shakes here in California down in South Texas as well, but nothing else going on volcanically or earthquake wise. And there is the moon. Still got a nice big bright moon in the evening. 97.3% waning gibbous going down to full moon phase here on October the 20th. First, folks, and that is the show for today. Got to answer the IQ question, though, before you head out the door. What is the least popular Halloween candy in the U.S.? Well, in my opinion, all of these are fairly unpopular, but the actual least popular one, as best we can tell, is circus peanuts. It's those orange rubbery things. You see big bags of them all over the store. I don't really know who buys those. I've never talked to anyone that likes them. If you like them, let me know, but... They're pretty bad. They don't taste very good. They have the consistency of a stale marshmallow and they don't look all that appealing. And that seems to be the most po least popular Halloween candy. So there you go, folks. And um, one other interesting note is World Series time or baseball playoffs time. And so I've got a historical fact around that. On October the 8th, 1956, Don Larson, the New York Yankees, pitched the first perfect game in World Series history. That means 27 batters up, 27 batters down. No walks, no hits, no runs, no nothing. All outs. Defeating the Brooklyn Dodgers by the final of 2-0. to zero. Do you know how many other perfect games have been thrown over the entire history of the World Series? How many other ones other than that one? Zero. That was the only one. Now you know about World Series and baseball. Now you know about the weather and hope you have a great afternoon, great morning, whatever time you're watching this, great night. But uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you back here tomorrow with another episode of Cold Rain's Weather World. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.